um, and there's members in the audience. Um, is it, it's like maybe Peggy just. Um, yeah, MJ O'Brien is the applicant. Yes. Okay, right, it's four o'clock. Oh, hi, <laughs> Rita. Yeah, we have a quorum. And I believe that Jim will be joining us. What about Marianne? Uh, Marianne, is she? Marianne uh, will not be joining us today. Yes, we should note that she's uh, 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 not just, she's almost in a butter. She's, uh, I think she's, her house is about very close by. You're right. She probably did receive an a butter's notice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she won't be voting today, so. Okay. Yeah. Right. I'll share Hi. my screen and just share the, um, the agenda. Oh, good. Because I, I oh. didn't get, if the agenda came, it's in my email, and I, I would be afraid to switch to email now to try to get it up and then come back to this. I'm better off just huh. using what I've got. Okay, so I should I officially call the meeting month. to order? I think so. Okay, it's uh, four o'clock, so I will officially call the meeting of the Local Historic District Commission to order. Um, we have a uh, number of items on the agenda today. Uh, the public hearing, uh, there's three items on the public hearing portion of the agenda. Um, and the first is uh, Margaret O'Brien at 25 Page Street. So um, I think we'll welcome uh, Margaret and maybe just, you know, briefly go through and um, introduce ourselves. So I'm Jennifer Taub. Uh, I, actually, I, and I'm a neighbor, but I'm not in a butter. I did not get a notice. And then uh, we have Peggy, can we go down to you? Uh, I'm not sure what you want me to do. Oh, just introduce yourself for Margaret so she knows who she's speaking with. Oh. Okay. Okay, Peggy Schwartz and, and uh, took a walk past the house this morning. It was a lovely walk and yeah. a sweet house. So lovely <laughs> to see it. And then we have uh, Bruce. We <laughs> Uh, Bruce Coldham, um, Margaret, hello. Um, I'm uh, an architect, or at least I, I was uh, retired these days, uh, but the commission has uh, a requirement for a person with architectural background and experience, and I fill that role. And uh, I was uh, standing outside your house about an hour and a half ago, and uh, somebody knocked on the window, but I chose to ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> and Karen? Mm -hmm. You're on mute, Karen. Oh, Karen, you're on mute? So hover over your Now, door. now. Yes, great. Yes. Hi, Peggy. Hi. I know you. Yes. And uh, Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> And Greta. Hi, Peggy. Hi. Okay, so actually, I'm not seeing you, Margaret. Yeah, I'll say to our applicant, uh, Peggy, uh, if on the bottom left of your screen, um, you it'll have a microphone and it, it's muted right now. So if can, you pr yep, can we can hear. Can you hear me? Yes. How do I get visual? Sorry, Ben. <laughs> yeah, but it's okay. So right, right next to that microphone is a camera looking thing and it says. Uh, I don't see it now. Oh, oh, okay. And no. it'll, it'll say start video. I don't, I don't see a camera looking thing. And it, you know, I, yeah, I'm, I, this is Nate um, Malloy, also a planner at the town with Ben. I mean, it may be, I realized actually my Sorry, computer... your video. Okay, okay. Oh, good, you have it. Oh, there my... you are. Hi, Peggy. Oh, my... Do I exist yet? Yes, yep, you do. There. Now oh, he's Samuel yeah. Beckett is relieved. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, i sorry. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That's all right. I was going to say, some computers just, don't have a camera. Just to insert a note of humor. Right. I'm retired from the UMass English Department. All of my younger colleagues are doing this every day for every class they give, and yeah. I can't imagine it. But you can actually, I can't see me. You can see me? Yes, yeah. we can see you. That's all that matters. I'd rather yeah. not see me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, Peggy, what we, um, uh, we're going to, you know, call on you now that, um, you know, to present, uh, you know, your application. And then, um, you know, as members of the commission, we may have some questions for you. And then what we do is we close the, what we call public 
you know, portion. And then we, um, you'll still you be together. here, but we'll talk among ourselves, right? Okay. No, and we will. Uh, be, so I we'll won't, be. I won't hear that conversation, but. No, you will hear it. Oh, okay. Yeah, or, you'll still oh, hear so, it, but we just. So right now, there, uh, uh, there is, so I better, I better not make as many smart aleck remarks, right? Oh, you can. <laughs> we're, we're good with that. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, this is open to the public. Yes. Oh, well, the, the whole thing is open to the public. But what, what, the reason we call it the public portion is in case any members of the public also have any questions. Okay, that's 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 really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, so now we'll turn mm -hmm. it over to you to present what uh, you're proposing to do to your lovely house. Ben well, it is a, Ben yeah. Berger has started pinch for out for a bigger view. Oh yeah, no, that's okay. That's okay. Well, I do you want me to. Make yeah, yeah, go for it. Go for it. Um, well, mainly what I have to say is in that kind of proposal I wrote, you know, as part of the application, and I don't want to just repeat all that. But let me just say, you know, I mean, it's very funny. I mean, I, I won't get too theoretical, but authenticity is a very hard thing to pin down, right? Uh, and the part of this house that we would like to renovate now is as um, not authentic as it's possible to be. Um, the previous owners, I think the, the owner, the, 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 the husband and his sons built it themselves. It is a mishmash and a hodgepodge. It wasn't built well. Um, yeah, that's a help. You, and um, it, it can, they, they, they added on this back room, which apparently was a dormitory for six of their boys, and a deck. Wow. Uh, yeah. Um, and it, wow. it's, crude. it's crude. It always was crude. And from the moment we, uh, well, I moved in and then we became we, um, uh, I knew that this was on the long, as we'd say in Ireland, on the long finger. It was going to have to be done at some point. Um, it's now, uh, and um, I didn't get the name of the, the man that I knocked on the window at? Bruce. Oh, Bruce. oh, that would be me, Bruce. Yes, I was wearing Hi, a blue Bruce. pullover. Uh, Bruce, um, you know, you probably saw, even from a distance, and you were very discreet, um, that it's the deck is totally dilapidated. And in I, fact, yeah. yeah, and if you look... Uh, if you I didn't come close, around far enough to, uh, to do that. Oh, it's, 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 it, 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 you know, you can't really walk on it. I was, I was almost going to go out and warn you, but I knew you weren't going to do that. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, the windows are, 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 are heterogeneous. They're not all the same. They, 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 I think they were gleaners and they used what they could find. Um, and so, you know, for us, it, it's very important to, in fact, restore this and hopefully make it more um, integral or integrated with the house. Uh, I, I ran this by Ben this morning. To, I, I have to insert something personal because in the uh, proposal I mentioned the importance of a handicap accessible shower and so on. When we um, hatched this plan, the idea was to have, and of course, Greta, are you there at the meeting? Yeah, Greta's here. And Karine and everybody? Yes. yes. Well, you know who I'm talking about when I talk about Wynn, all right? Right, right. The, the, and you've seen him walk up and down Lincoln with the Parkinson's advancing. Well, uh, Wynn was in ICU for five days last week, and alas, yesterday, he went into the Fisher home. Oh. Okay? Oh. And I almost, mm. I called Ben and I said, I don't even know if I can do this, but I decided I had to do it because even though he is in the Fisher home, the Fisher home is such an amazing place that it could be possible for him still to be in this back room and for the hospice staff, if you get my meaning, mm -hmm. to, to, to come to it. So that is the object of oh. this room, okay? Um, it, it the on the north end of it, um, there is going to be a handicap accessible shower. You know, a pretty a, most of the a lot of the room taken up by the shower, um, and um, 
you know, there'd be a closet, room for a bed, room for, um, you know, maybe a television set or, or whatever. Um, and um, the um, one... Sheet 12, Ben. Yeah, and, and I heard what you said about the, 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 the designating of north and south and east on these drawings is for the birds. You're quite yeah. right. Okay. <laughs> I didn't then... do that. All right. Um, it's okay. I know Steve well. <laughs> well and again, I should also add that after two glasses of wine, <laughs> what? Now, we have what? no jurisdiction over the inside of the room. No. Oh, only well, the outside. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's well, the... well, what I was going to mention is the other thing. This you do have jurisdiction over, and one of the things that would there, that, as I see it, there are three things that visually impinge on uh, on somebody walking down the street, okay? Um, one would be the, uh, the roof line in the back would be different. Uh, and in fact, um, Ben, I don't know if you have it, but there's a house, a, a yellow house on uh, Best oh, yeah. and, the, and the front porch has a roof line. No, that's Morianne's. No, White House. The roof line would be very like that on the front porch there, if you can see it uh -huh. in, in the yeah, back. Lovely. Yeah. So that would be one change. Screened in porch, in, obviously, you know, a full story rather than just a deck. And I consider the screened in porch extremely important for Wynn to be able to get out and get air and be safe uh, in all kinds of ways. Um, and um, this is the other thing which I can imagine, I mean, you know, it, it changes things. I'm, I'm saying that I would ideally like stairs uh, going um, down um, toward on the, um, am I right here now, on the um, south end going toward the west, toward the street. Uh, from, I think from the, uh, the stairs that are shown are on the north side. Well, mm -hmm. I want them. Well, but the, the deck, the yes. screen porch deck, the screen porch uh, is where you'd want the stairs, right, on the south side of that. Well, I or the maybe the, the uh, west side of that. The, the, they would they I would be on the west. They would be on the south side. Right. If you think of the how the the porch. The, the, the room is going north to south, okay? Yeah, the screen porch is on the south side. The, it's on the south side, but the, yeah. but the stairs would be on the Northampton side, on the west side. Yes. Yeah. Going can, down, can the object is to have stairs that can have a ramp attached to them for a wheelchair to get out to the street. That's and the, the, and the... And the ramp would run down the side of the house. Yes. Um, ben, can and, you put your be, cursor I mean, there? Yes, be, there. It would be a portable ramp. It would not yeah. be a permanent ramp. And the stairs would look like ordinary stairs off a porch. Yes, off, okay. The, the, but the, yeah, ben, the, the ramp... Ben, you have a picture. What? Yeah. It'd be, it'd be right there. It'd be right there. Yeah, it'd be right there. Right, right. And, yeah. and it would be coming down right... There, it wouldn't extend any further. It would come down. The stairs would come <coughs> down. And there'd be a ramp yeah. to come out to that walkway. So you could yeah. get out... It seems okay. very intelligent. This is what people should be doing. I mean, I, well, that's a personal it's, it's, opinion. And it's, it's minimal. I mean, I'm, the clapboards would be the same clapboards. The shingles, that the, you know, commensurate with what's already there. Um, the footprint would be no bigger than it is now. Um, um, I have included houses from um, Beston, incidentally, I'm, I'm devoted to these two streets, just devoted to them. And uh, the houses I love on Beston, new, newer people coming in and they've made changes that are more dramatic than the one I'm suggesting, yeah. but I think they only enhance the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, we would agree. Hmm? We would agree. So as for builders, this is, this is where things get a bit difficult and they go back to the to the Fisher home. Um, I am still 
there's there's still th two things that are that are up in the air. Uh, still trying to decide on a builder. I don't want to name names. If you need names, I can give you no, the names. No, we don't. We don't. But okay, it has to do with bids and whatever. But the other thing, and this I talked to Ben about this about coming to the meeting now. Um, I am especially with um, wind's condition and the the you know you know having my temperature taken every morning that I go into the Fisher house now I'm very wary I didn't intend that rhyme of having um, a bunch of building done and a lot of people around right at the moment and so this well this might be optimistic but this could be delayed if if I got permission until the spring. Um, but I would, and then I would, you know, like to be able to not have to go through, you know, to be able to just do it when it, when the, when the, when the, the time is right. Um, I think you have two um, years. Is that right, Nate? Pardon? Yeah, or a year, right? Is it a year? Oh, yeah. is it a year? Yeah, you have oh, a it's year. At least, I could even do it next at least a year. Summer? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, you have a year. Yeah. That is, that gives us a lot of freedom if that happens. But what I also wanted to say, and I know this isn't your ambit, okay? But one of the things that you all have noticed about Dear Page Street is um, the way it gets pretty congested down at the end here, right? And whenever building goes on in this cul-de-sac, <laughs> there's always mayhem and bad feeling and what have you. And as you will have seen, um, Mr. Architect, I am not a gardener. And so <laughs> I have said, we're gonna, we're gonna landscape this after the building. And so the builders can drive onto that side yard backyard hmm. and because piers will have to be put in because the, the 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 current deck is just so you know it was so badly put together so so that's it and i think there's one omission but it's not really an omission because we haven't decided on it but i do realize that if we wanted air conditioning in this room that would be another thing i'd have to apply for but i'd apply for it separately and other than that, you ask me questions, you know, I, I, does that cover most of? Yeah, that's, I don't yes. know. Yes, I, I don't, I don't have any questions, I don't think. I think I understand, uh, um, uh, I understand the drawings, I understand what you're doing, I understand that basically that shed, uh, uh, Addition it is a on shed. the back. That's, that's well, the shed. shed the shed right? is the term for the roof. The the slope of the roof. It's a single oh, sloping. No, plane. but I like the term generally for what it what it yeah. is. <laughs> so the, the 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 roof plane. The the slope of the roof is being turned ninety degrees. So, uh, uh, and it's a bit of a butterfly um, with yeah. a gable in the middle and two flanking lower pitched uh, roofs that go over porches on either side. It seems to me to be. Uh, um, I mean, well, I, my opinion doesn't matter for the moment. Uh, what matters is that I don't have any further questions. Okay. Um, but others might have because uh, it, the drawing set wasn't as easy as uh, uh, what there what there wasn't that would have helped uh, was a three dimensional drawing or two. Yeah, I, I I think the most for me the most helpful. Well, I mean, I I'm I, I this is just Greek to me, but. For me, the east elevation, has he got the east elevation right? Is it east? I don't think. Yeah, the east elevation and the new yeah. floor plan are it's the most helpful things. Yeah, but, east elevation, um, north elevation, east yeah. elevation. Yeah. yeah, I think the east elevation. So that's the elevation looking from the back You see, back you see yeah, he does, I just wanted to say, there's no gable window. There's just this pointed roof. And then the, the gable is up above. So, you know, it, and it's already in, it, it exists. Mm. The the stuff in back already exists. Mm -hmm. So, 
So it's only that little A-shaped um, uh, roof, and the and the porch roof is not that different from what exists now because he had to integrate it somehow with the new bit. So the 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 roof plane on the right hand side of that drawing is the existing porch roof. Uh, which yep. uh, melds into a yep. cross, a cross yep. gable, a gable that goes in the opposite in the ninety degree. And, and so, so it's even you know you'd really have to crook the old neck to see that a kind of A shape. Yeah. Um, but I mean, but but the deck as it exists now is only halfway up, and this would be this would be a you know full height. The the the, the screened in porch would go across the width of the house? Uh, no. No. It go... No, it would just go, um, let's see. Because if you go to, uh, maybe there's one, maybe go to a floor plan. Uh, it just goes a little way up. It goes almost, I think it's almost the this exact is the roof of where the, the, where the deck is now. Right, so you can it see the, the whole... porch is just up. Oh, it up, doesn't up. go toward to the front of the house. No, okay. no, oh. that's why I'm saying this is really minimal. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, really? even if it did, right. Huh? No, even if it did, that would be fine. But um, yes, but it's, 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 it doesn't. It, we don't have to. Uh, uh, we don't have to be convinced about right. uh, the smallness of the uh, right. uh, of the change. Uh, we need to be convinced that it's uh, appropriate. Right. Yeah, I was gonna, Ben. That's I was gonna, do you have a, you know, ben, do you have a, a clear property map? Um, Pardon? Yeah. I think you know some of it is you know my questions would be what are some of the oh, there it is great you know some of the details um, on the windows are they similar in the porch? Um, in some instances, some of this won't be really visible from the street. Um, mm -hmm. um, I, to, to answer that question, the, the windows that are there now are an unholy heterogeneous mess. I think they just used what they could find. There are all <laughs> kinds of diff different windows. And the windows we would use would be like the windows in the main part of the house, the old part of the house, Good. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. not, not, not replacing the kind of the windows that are there because they, they are, they'd be like that. Yeah. You know? um, but uh, not the way the, the windows are now. They're <laughs> they're a riot, you know. They're every kind of window you can imagine. <laughs> I really mean it. It's yeah. hilarious. Now, I Nate, take... I'm sorry. No, I should have taken a picture of it. And may I just say, this isn't your ambit either. But one of the joys of trying to arrange any kind of renovation on this house is that we have the distinction of being the epicenter of the old sewer system in this. Uh, uh, area and practically, I think maybe three sides of the house are are um, enclosed by the old sewer system. So you're right. Yeah. I'm yeah. Map now that you yeah, you're it. right. I know I'm right. And the and the <laughs> old the old sewer is, I believe, underneath this room. It but is. because it's always been underneath this room, we're okay with it. But we couldn't go out to the side or either side. We we are just they, we are sewer sewage central. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, well, this is um, probably a matter for the building inspector. So I'll yeah. I, ha I have a I have a technical curiosity, but I'll let it ride is that because Mr. it's not Smith, my business. The building inspector. No, it's uh, Rob Mara is the oh, uh, in, is the head of inspection services, and and he's got a number of people, and they're good, and they'll uh, they'll make sure that the foundation uh, and the sewer have a an agreeable marriage. Uh, which well, is, it's very important because it could wreck the lives of everybody around us. Yeah, you know, seriously. Because yeah, there are there are a number of ways in which very small sewer. You might want to look into diamond piers. Um, diamond? Uh, uh, I'll talk to Steve. Is Steve, is Steve Schreiber uh, uh, continuing to work for you? 
Uh, no, this was a discreet piece of work. Uh, I haven't asked him to do any more. This seemed okay. sufficient. Um, if, you, if, if, you, uh, if you have any problem with figuring out what the foundation is, uh, have uh, your contractor or whomever give me a call and we can talk about it. I don't need to take people's time here, but I've solved these problems before. But this is way in, outside the, the ambit of this That's very commission. kind of you. In relation to the sewage system and everything? The, 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 the issue is the marriage of, a, of an acceptable uh, foundation system with an existing sewer that's right below it. Well, what, what uh, you it's, are it's, so it's, good, but what, what are we hoping? But it's, this it's is not something least... we need to talk about here. It's, it's yeah. irrelevant to our conversation on the commission. Well, no, but it's something that keeps me awake at night because I worry, <laughs> I, I, I want to, I'd rather that the less done about with the foundation. I think the foundation is, a, is pretty much okay. I don't. I, I. I don't think we should go near that sewer. But if, thank you for that. I haven't. <laughs> obviously, you've thought it out, and I haven't. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Bruce. Um, so, are there uh, any other um, questions from the commissioners? Oh. Nope. No. And no. hey, hey, Karen. Hey. Hi. <laughs> This is so funny. <laughs> is, Bruce, is Bruce here too? I'm I don't around, I think. No, no. Do you want me, uh, oh, we have to move to close the hearing if we don't have any yeah, more Yeah, but no, questions. was there somebody else coming on? I couldn't tell, because I got another name that popped up at the bottom. I didn't know if that was an architect. Oh. Uh, well, uh, Jim's here too. He's been here for a little bit. Yeah. He, um, who, is yeah who is this? Uh, another commissioner, yeah. Jim Lumley. But I, I, I was cut off. I didn't, do you hear me? Oh, actually, okay. I think Jim, Jim's, um, Jim has his mute on. Yeah, Jim's muted. Okay, Peggy, were you, say, Peggy, were you saying something? You. Yes, I was saying something, so, but are, I, I don't want to interrupt. No, no, okay, I can't, couldn't, I oh, couldn't hear you. Uh, Peggy. Yep. Okay, okay. Am I'm I okay? Peggy. Okay, there are two I'm... Peggy's here. Hi, Peggy. Oh, okay. There Peggy. are two Peggy's here. Uh, this is Peggy, Peggy Schwartz, who's our... No, I know Peggy Schwartz. Yeah. Okay, there you go. It's been a while, right? <laughs> but I, yeah. I just want to say I'm very moved by your planning and the, uh, the, the thoughtfulness and the challenges. And I guess, given everything that's going on right now, the emotions are closer to the surface. And they're very close. God, yes. It, it's and, very, and the truth very is deeply when, when may never get to be in this room. We don't know. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, and then and it's the, the pandemic that makes it so yes. iffy, but that, 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 Peggy, thank you for that. You, you hit, that hits it. Yeah. yeah, well, that's what, this is your home. Right, we're with oh, you. Oh, this is our home and uh, we're blessed with it. And blessed with, you know, I mean, the neighborhood, I don't know what you all feel, but I feel the neighborhood has become even more beautiful by the year. I agree. I agree. I, I, know. I, walked this morning, I walked this morning from my home to yours. And I'm taking those walks around the center of town and I love those little streets. We have good friends on the next street over. Uh, so it's just we have another reason to. Yeah, on Beston, yeah, Kathy Portuguese. You might. You I know Kathy. Almost abut her, yeah. but I think maybe one. Oh, yeah, of course. Anyway, um, yes, it's just a neighborhood that I've always, always admired and just kind of a quintessential New England neighborhood. You just want to move into it, you know, and... and uh, well, and, and, and could I say something else to you all in relation to the visuals, okay? Um, even though I'm sure you don't go to this place mentally, but because of uh, the, the meadow at the back, Gabor's Meadow, do you know, on Beston Street. You all know what I'm referring to, the wetland. Right. In fact, the back of our house is seen a lot. Oh. Mm -hmm. It oh, is. What? People. You see it from Beston. You see it totally, meadow. the whole width of it from Beston. Yeah. And so I, that's been a consideration for me because uh, we love that meadow so much. And I love walking over to Beston and looking at the back of the house and you see the entire thing. So 
again, it's sort of like the sewage system being around, around the whole house. You can practically see every, you can see three sides of our house. And it's beautiful. Like when, when you say that it's kind of a hodgepodge, I would never notice that. I always admire your house when I walk by it. Oh God, thank yeah. you. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I had a question to clarify. Are any windows changing in the other parts of the house on this project? No. No. Um, now, wait a second. When I say that. And do you have an image you could go to maybe? Hmm? I don't think so. I mean, there might be so a replacement a in the kitchen, in the ki kitchen window, but that's down. The, that's a separate thing because that window is a one of those ones that you it's on you reel it in and out and it doesn't work anymore. But sure, but no. like on this picture right here, like the windows like right next to almost like behind the tree, uh, where Ben's no, th those, th those are those are those are permanent. Th those are all part of the extant house and not part of what's being changed. Yep. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Except there's a, what I'm saying is not in this uh, right, period, right. but there's yeah. a little, there's a little window. And again, this is part of the, the previous owners. There's a, there are some windows that just don't fit into the house at all. And, uh, you know, there might be an effort down the line to change them mainly because they're crappy windows that don't work anymore. You know, the kind I mean that you, yeah. yeah. You yes. reel them in and out, and they don't yeah. go. Up. Yeah, and they're, they're horrible. But that—that's not to the, the work we're doing now. Sure. Yeah. And there's another question: the the roof overhang and all that detail, the trim detail and fascia, that will all be the same. So Pardon? The, the, the detail along the roof line will be the same, like the overhang. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes, that, that's my assumption. I hope Steven Schreiber, so that may be, um, is it Bruce? Uh, Bruce, Bruce Coldham? Yes, I have a whimpering dog, so I've muted myself. Oh. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, I'm, I'm basically, no, Nate, I, uh, taking I, notes I, for uh, conditional uh, approval yeah. here. Okay, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just hoping that, that I'd assumed it was the same mm -hmm. in keeping with the rest, but yeah, that's, I think that was the that but was I'm my sure that's made explicit in the drawings, but that, that's a very that's an excellent point. That well, the drawings be, don't uh, get to that level of detail. Uh, of their, their, um, yeah. and and so the uh, I think that if we move as I expect we would to uh, uh, approve a, a certificate for appropriateness, uh, I would uh, propose uh, the. A conditional, uh, uh, yeah. say something like roof overhangs, fascia, and rake edge details, new windows to match, and anything else we want to add to that list to match those existing in the original portion of the house. That's all to the better. Okay. Thank you. I know you. that's the intention. Yeah. Um, are there any other questions? I don't have any. No. Okay, then can I ask for a motion to? Um, do I, stay, do I stay for this or do you, I go you, away? Yes, you stay. You stay. Yeah. So, Nate, I actually want to ask you, since we have other items on the public hearing, are we closing it as such? This so one. Do, you, usually we close it on this, just this project. Just on this right? one. Just, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, the way the agenda was laid out. So uh, if I could, um, any motion to close the public portion of the hearing on 25 Page Street application? So moved. Okay, all in favor? Second. I approve. Okay, um, Nate, we don't have to do a identify ourselves for this, do we? Who uh, Who is the second there? There was not one. I'll, I'll second it. <laughs> yeah, I was asking for a motion. It sounded like I was making it. So I apologize. Okay. Um, right. Nate, for this, we don't have to do a voice vote, do we? Uh, maybe we just go through it quickly. Okay, uh, so let's start with, because we're on Zoom, so that's why we each need to identify ourselves in the vote. Uh, Karen? I approve. Peggy? I approve. Bruce? Yep. Greta? I approve. It seems okay. to have frozen. Oh, okay. okay, Jim? I approve. And Jennifer, I approve. Okay, so... Um, Oh, so uh, Bruce, you had 
Well, if there's no further discussion, um, I, I think it's been, uh, I, I just would, would suggest that we make sure that everybody understands what's uh, being proposed here because the drawing sets are, uh, the drawing sets absent uh, a three dimensional drawing. Right. And we, we know from previous uh, projects, and uh, particularly the Amos Media project, that we uh, as a commission, uh, really work better with three-dimensional drawings than we do with uh, elevations and sections and plans and so forth. This is nowhere near as complicated as the Amos Media, right. but still there is no three-dimensional drawing involved. We just, I just thought, make sure that everybody has, feels they have a clear understanding of what's being proposed, because if not, we could take a moment to make sure that everybody's so comfortable with I actually with that. have a question, if I could, with this picture up, so we're talking about just that back part of the house. Yes. Yeah. If, okay. Yeah, if, you, if, you know, if we went back to the south elevation um, and the plan set, I think that's, um, if we did the south and the east, that's probably the most helpful. So right. right where you see the addition part, right, only the back here you know, where it's showing is what's changing. Right. May I, may I say something and to what Bruce, the point Bruce just made that, um, you know, I, th these these drawings are pretty retro, and um, ev the two builders that I have gone to, both just immediately talk about one of the things they'll have to do is uh, 3D renderings. Okay. All right, and then the east elevation band, if you just went to that, just so we could, um, right, so then across the back, um, there's changes, so that's just... Okay just so that you know, the commission knows that's where the work is being, is on the south and the east. The south and the east, okay. Yes, yes, that's correct. Yeah. The south and the east. Okay. So if we're ready, I will do what I usually do. Yeah. That's uh, uh, move to uh, approve granting of a certificate of appropriateness for the uh, addition uh, to the house at uh, 25 uh, Page Street in Amherst based on uh, the uh, drawings uh, submitted, uh, compiled by architect Stephen Schreiber, with findings that the proposed work meets the review criteria expressed in sections 8.1 and 8.2 of the AMIS Local Historic District Bylaw, and uh, that the proposal is compatible with the overall appearance of the neighborhood and will not have a negative impact on the uh, uh, Prospect Lincoln Sunset Local Historical District um, with the uh, condition that um, the roof, uh, new, uh, the roof overhangs, fascia and yes. rake edge detail and new windows um, match those existing in the original portion of the house. Um, Will this be in, will that, what you've just said be in written form? Yeah. So, yeah. So that I can show it to any builder or anybody? Yep. Yes. Yeah, you'll have that in writing. I, yes. I want that to be very explicit. Yeah. Well, it will be when I'm finished. <laughs> um, I think I've already said that uh, the work is executed according to the documentation. Uh, there's no dates. I don't think there's a date on there. Is there a date? I don't know. No. Yeah, I didn't see any, right? I think you had said okay. you noted the drawings. Um, yes, I did. So I'm going to skip that bit. Um, and I think so that I think I am finished. I probably have a date somewhere, but I'd have to go. It's the not on the drawing, so it doesn't matter. Okay. I mean, it, it would need to be on the documents it's to, to identify the them. No, it's not on the drawing. Okay, so we're looking but for I a think, second. I think we've identified them by the authorship. Yes. yes. So that's it. Is there a second for that? Is there a second? I, I second. Can't. Okay, thank you, Karen. Seconds. Um, so all in favor, again, we have to do a voice vote, so we'll start with Bruce. Um, I approve. Karen? I approve. Um, Peggy? Approve. Rita? I approve. And Jim? 
I approve. And Jennifer, I approve. So um, great. So you, uh, again, I know, uh, Peggy, you're not starting right away, but because uh, technically once we approve, you don't, you don't have to wait to have the certificate physically in hand, but um, you will be notified, you know, when one is available, it, it will be soon for you to pick up a copy. And, um, you know, we wish you all the best. Yes. And may I, may I just say, I know you all, and I know a lot of you all from way back, and I know you operated with the utmost of integrity here, but on given the day that's in it, as we'd say in Ireland, you lifted a huge weight off me, and I really am very grateful, but I'm glad it, I'm, I, 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 I want it, this to enhance the neighborhood. It will. So yeah, so there and we, you go. It's a great neighborhood. Yes, <laughs> and, and we know that it will. Yeah. And um, I guess just sort of off the record, if there's anything any of us who live right around you can can do, we're here. I totally well, agree. Yes. No, that's the feeling. I, I think what the historic, just if I can insert this, what the historical district could never convey. I mean, even in this little this crisis in our, in our little lives. Oh my Lord, the tightness of this neighborhood is extraordinary. You know, it really is, it's not just about architecture. There's a huge communal sense, don't you think? Yes. Yes. Huh? So we agree. We there agree. you go. Yeah. Okay. Over and out. Now do I push go away or something? <laughs> what do I do now? And meeting. Ben, 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 the rest we of the meeting. meeting. <laughs> There's a, a red button that should say leave meeting. Yep, in the bottom. And, and can I just say that I would not have been part of this meeting if a certain man that I'm looking at right now, Ben, <laughs> hadn't given me <laughs> free tutoring for an hour and a half this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've become, so, a, become a Zoom instructor. <laughs> of okay. Hey, goodbye. Right. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Okay. It's amazing that open government continues in this. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, all right. Uh, thank you all. Thank you very much. Okay. So, our next. Um, so, again, uh, Nate and Ben, since do we don't really need to have a discussion on the fee since we've already discussed that. But do we ask if there's any members of the public who have any comment on this propo proposal? Yeah, yeah, I think you can. And um, I, I'm sharing the screen. I, I, I think you may be able to see it. I can read it for- um, Oh, you know what? I was in adopt the legal fee. Oh, right. we're, we're gonna do it through this. Right. Oh, because, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay. Sorry, I, you know, I, I'll just read what, you know, just yeah. so could people who are, I'm assuming they can see it, but it, um, yes. what we're discussing, it says the commission establishes an application fee paid by an applicant to help defray the cost to the town of administering the application and publishing the hearing notice in the Daily Hampshire Gazette. The fee of $50 shall be collected at time of application and is required for an application to be considered complete and reviewed by the commission. So that's, that's the language. Mm -hmm. Good. Fine. I will say that one, um, a previous applicant had um, emailed staff and thought that the $50 application fee could be a cost a barrier to applying to the commission. Um, I, yeah. I, uh, I have his email up right now. Mm -hmm. Nate, oh. um, okay, if you want to read it, I mean, I think I, I think I summarized it, but you could see if I... Yeah, it, it was a little bit more nuanced. It was just saying, uh, while I understand the committee would like to only spend time on applications that will actually be acted upon, if there is going to be a fee, there should be a much more detailed list slash examples of what requires an application or some triage process before the fee is collected. In, in current documents that were forwarded to me describing the application, they were quite vague about what actually requires approval. I recognize there's a huge variety of applications, but some typical and not obvious, like mini splits, for example, would be useful. Just my two cents. So you're just saying if, essentially like if there is a legal fee enacted, um, 
it seems like you know more exclusions which we are doing but then also just making the mm -hmm. uh process a bit more straightforward about what needs to be um the the issue with you know if you're applying you know to ha get a new roof for you're 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 applying for a building permit and it's not till that point that you're told that you need to go before the local historic district commission i think the mini splits is one of those where people have been installing them and just it doesn't even occur to them because you don't need a building i think do you need a building permit for a mini split just an electrical permit but the state allows an electrical permit honestly to be applied for and then acted on by the contractor there's a a provision that they don't even have they can do the work without the the permit in hand so they often apply to the town and then go ahead and do the work um, right they don't even think that they need to come before us right yes it's a it's an interesting thing that uh, because my uh, daughter and son-in-law had uh, an electrician who acted exactly as you described Nate but there's no provision for when the electrician then goes and dies before the work is finished right which is what happened and said, now we've got a muddle to sort yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, I will so say it's, that, it's you know, not a, it's not a, it's not a good idea, I don't think, but anyway, right. that's the way it is apparently. Yeah, I mean, I will say on the second floor, you know, we have Jen Mullins, the permanent administrator. So we, what I can see is they email, you know, even the electrical inspector, Tina, she'll send emails to Ben and I, and we have quite a few in the last, you know, week about um, possible projects where they're doing you know, someone submits an electrical permit and it's for a project or property in the local historic district. Yeah. And we look at it. So I, I agree um, with you, Jennifer. I think there's too many variables to say to have a list of what triggers review right. because we could get it wrong and things change. I actually think that between the bylaw, um, the rules and regulations, which we send to an applicant and we, we, we require a meeting with staff that usually clarifies, you know, whether or not it's, Part of the review of a local sort district so at that time they would be told there's a fee or that they have to submit it so right. i don't this is not a critique of the fee this is a critique of the bylaw right and uh, uh so it doesn't apply to our current situation mm -hmm. right um so i yeah you know so i think in the email there's a little it what i'm hearing is they'd like to know before they apply mm -hmm. right whether there's a fee but you know, they, they, there may be work they want to do that doesn't require even applying and then the fee won't apply. Right. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we discussed it, but I, you know, as we, I mentioned last meeting, two meetings ago when we were talking about this, we had like a perfect example of someone who three times was on the agenda and never came and the town had incurred the expenses of notifying the abutters and placing the ad and so this I think I think we stand strong on this. I don't think yeah. we need to worry about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, can we vote? Take a vote on this, Nate and Ben, or do we do we have to have a motion to close the public portion? No, I, I think you know, looking at the legal ad, this was this was one um, one discussion point, and then the exclusions were another. So I think you know, um, if we there could be a vote, you know, to um, to recommend approval or, you know, the establishment of a fee. I think, it, you know, it could just happen that way. Okay. So um, would any, would, could we have a, someone like to make a motion? Uh, I move to accept the, uh, the proposal to uh, add an application fee to our rules and regulations uh, in, in uh, as, as, uh, uh, as proposed. Is there a second? I second. Uh, Greta, okay. And then we'll take a vote for all in favor. And I'll start with Greta. Yes, I approve. Uh, Bruce? I approve. Um, Peggy? Approve. Uh, Karen? I approve. And Jim? I approve. And Jennifer, I approve. Okay, so right. we have, great. Added, and the fee, okay. And then we move on to uh, the rules and regulations. And do you want to take that, Nate or Ben? Looks like there's a, a hand raised. It's um, I'll, it's Hilda. Hilda, you can unmute yourself. I just wanted to say that 
if somebody objects to paying the fee and then it turns out that they don't need to apply or whatever, this, you can always refund the money. Take the money and refund it if you don't need it. Right. Like we did, did ZBA now and again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true, right? We, we, right, the town would make refunds. That's a good point. Right. And you wouldn't, you usually don't, you wouldn't until the town, you apply for a building permit, and if you don't, the town would even refer you to make the application to the LHDC. Right. I mean, well, sometimes what happens is an applicant may assume they need it. They submit an application and staff enters it and t receives the check. Oh, okay. And then, you know, may check right. after the fact, but right. the town would issue a refund, right? So we wouldn't right. keep a, a check that. Right. Because the town wouldn't be incurring, incurring the expenses. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Hilda. Um, okay, so do you, did you want to do provide the overview, Nate? Sure. So, you know, that as the commission discussed, there's, um, a number of exclusions today. I, I'm trying to share the screen if everyone can see them. And therefore certain elements that have been reviewed and we found that it's, you know, somewhat perfunctory to look at these and it's, you know, there's such a variety and there's minor to the appearance that they would could be exclusion. So in order, you know, they're uh, we're excluding the a flu cap. So the installation or replacement of a flu, flu cap on an existing chimney or vent stack, um, electrical box, the installation or replacement of additional meters, solar disconnect box, mini split electrical box or similar electrical utility box if it is immediately adjacent to existing utility, mechanical and electrical equipment boxes on the structure. So that's, you know, we've discussed that. Um, the exterior condenser compressor, the installation of an exterior compressor or condenser, if all of the following apply. There are two or fewer per structure. The highest point is less than five feet off of the ground. It remains screened from view from, with vegetation and it is not within 10 feet of an entry exhaust fan, installation or replacement of a single exhaust vent for a dryer, bathroom, or kitchen attached to, a, to no greater than a six inch diameter duct. A plumbing vent through the roof, installation or replacement of a plumbing vent through roof. And the, the final exclusion would be a vent hood, installation or replacement of standard direct vent hood for an interior unit such as combustion heater or boiler. Can I ask a question? I'm um, under the 3.2.1, the uh, condenser compressor, mm -hmm. where it says uh, the third bullet, if it mm -hmm. remains screened from view with vegetation, mm -hmm. could it be a vegetation or fencing? Or was well, we thought uh, when we discussed this last time, we thought that the uh, the fencing that we we wouldn't have control over the fencing. Right, so they would have to come to us with the fencing design. That's right, because they okay. could decide that an appropriate fence was a uh, concrete masonry that they right. just happened to have in okay. the backyard. Okay. So <laughs> we were clear that that fencing was so that's not. That's what we thought yeah. that they would have to come to us. Okay. Yeah, I, I have. Uh, I ask the commission when that under the same exclusion, when it says the highest point is less than five feet off the ground, that it's understood that that's the highest point of the condenser compressor. So that's, I mean, that's, that's, I'm, that's the way, that's the way I think it's intended. I just wanna make sure that everyone understands it that way. Yes, I think so, yeah. because the, 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 the intro is an exterior compressor or condenser. Mm -hmm. You might wanna put compressor condenser unit Mm -hmm. Yeah. After that, and then the installation of an exterior compressor or condenser. I think uh, delete the or because now you've changed it to two separate, potentially separate things. Uh, which uh, so something like that. Uh, please. Yes, I think something like that is uh, what right. we mean because they're a, they're an integral thing, uh, basically right. an air conditioning uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, device. I I just have a quick question about the. The same one. Um, so, what about like the uh, all of the hosing involved with um, mini splits? Like, is that separate from the condenser compressor? Um, and would like if someone just thinking if someone like needs to install a mini split, the, we're excluding the condenser and compressor, but not the hosing. And I know that often like runs up and down the house. Well. 
Yes, that's true. We didn't talk about that, did we? Maybe I'm, uh, but it's, it, it can uh, be uh, with the kind of, uh, now what do we say? There are, t uh, there are two or fewer for structure. Uh, hmm. Yep. It, it could be that the, uh, the, the, the covered line sets uh, would run quite a distance. One of the uh, yeah. features of this technology, which was not the case in the 1980s, but definitely is the case now, is that you can run these lines to uh, 150 feet or more. Uh, they, they used to be very constrained and the efficiency of the unit would uh, would ca would tank if you ran the line longer mm -hmm. than 30 feet. But uh, these uh, latest technologies uh, that we've had for the past 10 and 15 years, you can run them quite a long distance. So we should recognize that uh, there could be quite a length and maybe maybe uh, uh, maybe we could consider adding a fifth uh, uh, bullet there which said uh, that the aggregate length of uh, encapsulated line sets is uh, uh, no, not greater than 30 feet 40 feet 50 feet or do I mean would we would we have something to say that the the line set is um, you know, uh, follows, um, you know, uh, like features of the house. So it follows gutters or corners. I mean, you know, for instance, in my neighborhood, someone put a condenser, you know, right out front and then they ran the line set, you know, next to a window, you know, on two sides of it and went and then right over the window around the corner and then tucked it in, you know, upstairs. And so you have, you know, they painted it the same color as the siding, but you see that there's this line set that, yeah. They ran vertically as opposed to say keeping it low and then running just one vertical piece. So I don't, it's a good point Ben. I, I think, um, I, guess I, I was assuming that right at that we'd have a thoughtful installation, but maybe we can't assume that, that someone could put it, you know, if they meet these conditions and you know, is the, is the piping excluded? Um, I think uh, it, it, that would be a, a good idea, Ben, except, uh, Ben, uh, Nate, except that, uh, the building inspector would probably not want to be put in the position of making an aesthetic judgment, my guess right. is. So I think it would be safer to do what we've done with all of the other uh, conditions, which are basically numerical. There's two or fewer, there's five feet off the ground, there's right. 10 feet from the entry. I would say that uh, the aggregate length of exposed line set um, is not... Is, is, is not greater than 20 feet. And then, so, and then they, we would have to review anything with more pipe. Yeah, pipe in other words, it becomes more complicated if there's more. Right. Uh, right. And, and these are the intent of this is to get people going quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that would encourage them to be very efficient in the way in which they place these things and have less than 20 feet of line set. I don't know that 20 feet's the right number, but since we have two of them, um, it, it might be, uh, but I, uh, I, we could say 20 feet, you know, uh, maximum length of length of, um, piping could be 20 feet or less per condenser, you know, per unit or something. Right. So because it, you could have yes. two units that are not running the same, yeah, are, you know, separate side. So you'd ha you mm. could specify the twenty feet per unit. I think this this I particular think condition is one that will be hard for us to know that we've gotten right. But I think Ben's point is excellent, and we really did, I think, overlook yeah, that sorry, particular. I... Uh, so I think we should put in a number, uh, uh, but and then see how it flies uh, for the first year, and be prepared to. Uh, review and revise based on uh, a year of experience or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just realized that when I was going over the exclusions this morning, but I, I wish I had <laughs> brought it to everyone's attention like oh, last I, month. I think this yeah. is timely. Uh, oh, that's great. Uh, ben, uh, in, yeah. uh, Nate, why don't you say uh, encapsulated line sets? So, yeah, I, yeah, okay. I mean, um, yeah, I, mean I think I was trying to think, I was trying to, clarify that the piping shall be encapsulated, you know, not to miss it, right? But you think encapsulated line set would be 
Yes, because it always is encapsulated. They just don't. Uh, they just don't put it. Uh, they don't install them without this uh, vinyl encapsulation. It's partly because it. it uh, so in, encapsulated line sets. So that basically uh, shall uh, be no longer than twenty feet uh, in aggregate. Or the aggregate of encapsulated line of sets shall be no longer than twenty feet. Okay, Peggy, did you want to add something? Yeah, Peggy. Yes. Well, I just, I want to, yes, thank you. It's, it, this is such a specialized conversation that not all of us understand even all of the uh, implications of it. I'm wondering if it's a conversation that might be more efficiently held between the experts on this and then brought back to us when, uh, when, the, when there's some consensus among them. You see what I'm saying in terms of tonight's meeting? I, right. I think, I don't think so. I, I think that this is a, a straightforward thing. And the only, the only thing is in, in, in under discussion is the length of uh, the, um, the amount of exposed um, piping, if you want to put it that way. Uh, I'm calling them line sets because that's the technical term. The amount of exposed uh, um, line set. And, and we just have to make a guess at what we think is reasonable. I would say, uh, I would I would delete the per unit, but uh, because uh, but, but we could keep it. They're big houses, so I suppose that's we should keep it that way. And then we just should see what happens. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I want to say per unit, Bruce, because I mean, if we say twenty feet, that's only ten feet per. What if they're putting two units in different locations on the structure, right? You're right, and and twenty feet will get somebody from the first floor to the third floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, Peggy, I think you know we could uh, the commission can always amend the rules and regulations. So if we find you know next year at some point that you know the average line set is forty feet, and you know we could change this, but I think yeah, I agree with Bruce that the twenty feet is going to. Um, you know, it's going to kind of require that the installer think um, better about how to run the line set. So, you know, you can't just be sloppy mm -hmm. about it. You're going to have to be pretty direct and try to make it minimal. And that's, that's the point. It's hard to actually get that in writing. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, because you can run it inside, right? So the one that we saw on Lincoln Ave. Oh, that's a good point. I did say that uh, the uh, exposed, uh, exposed encapsulated, uh, because you're right, you can run it inside. Right. Should I say just exterior? Um, I think it's understood, right? Because we're the historic district. We don't have jurisdiction over anything that's uh, exposed yeah. inside. It's only that if it's exposed right. in, in, a, in a... Oh, you haven't got exposed in there yet. Oh, let me say, I said exterior, but I'll say exposed. Exposed, encapsulated, and how do you... Kind of, kind of like an oxymoron a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> exposed uh, encapsulated line yeah ex that. Ex uh, on exterior i'll just say on exterior yes yes exterior structure shall be no longer shall be no longer there we are Okay, so encapsulated line set on exterior structure shall be no longer than 20 feet in aggregate per unit. And okay. Length. No longer than 20 feet. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that gets us uh, as, 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 as well as we can do in, in uh, and I mm -hmm. don't think any further conversation is going to improve this. Um, I'm, I think we, we should. Uh, move to, I, so I think we can move to a vote. There's no other questions or comments. There is, uh, Hilda has another, her hand raised. Hilda, you can, I unmuted you or allowed you to speak. I'm thinking of my old house here. The one thing you don't mention that I got here is a 25 gallon propane tank. And do you want to include things like that or exclude them or what? Well, yeah, so that's not, the commission hasn't um, discussed those. So those, we couldn't just take those, we could take them under, um, recommendation today, but we couldn't add them to the changes now. We need to present the changes to the commission at a public meeting before approving them. So 
So what, what it would mean is if people want a propane tank, then they um, would have to apply. Right. Or, you want it in the yeah. front where it can be seen from the street. Yeah. Right. Right. But what you're saying, Nate, is we can't just add it to the list because we haven't put it out there for public notice. Right. So if we, if we think we want to have that be another exclusion, we take it under advisement today and then we could talk about it at a future meeting. Okay. Well, it should, well, I don't know if, you, if you're regulating all these other things, you may want to regulate that. That's all I'm saying. Either to put yes, it I'm, on or off. Yeah. Is that, is that, uh, is it, uh, how, I'm not sure how that would be triggered though, because uh, it can, is, is it not possible for someone to put in a propane tank without um, getting a building permit? I mean, for example, let's say they've got a propane tank and they get, and they change from Osterman to George, and Mr. George comes along and, and he puts his propane tank in a slightly different location um, because it's, uh, it's convenient for him. Um, is yeah, there the any, is there any, the is there any, the what I'm going to say is, move it. there really is no, there really is no trigger for the local historic district, right? That. So that's, that's, I'm thinking if it's not, there's not a lot of point in putting in something here if, if it's, uh, if it happens outside our, our, our jurisdiction, orbit. well, not even jurisdiction, we might be able to assert it, but, but it, it's the mechanism that we have for picking all of this up and for being alerted and all of this stuff is through the building commissioner. Right. And my sense is that, that this would be, we, we, we would have to figure out some other way of being uh, aware of right. uh, uh, initiatives to, to put in building uh, propane tanks. Right. I think if this, you know, if it was part of a larger project, the commission could review it. Yeah. Or a gas, uh, like they probably need a gas permit. Mine had to be moved when, when I changed purveyors because it was too close to the, the um, either the air conditioner or the oil tank, I'm not sure, but they had to move it. So it, it shows. I think, yeah, I don't, I don't know if we can, I think we could, you know, Think about it for another meeting for a discussion. Yeah, put it on your list. You're too okay. doing this. <laughs> thank you. We will. Thanks, Hilda. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So if um, there is no further questions or items for discussion, I guess we can move to adopt these exclusions that have been um, already had public notification provided for. Is there um, a motion? I would and we say so moved to, to oh, uh, do we, we don't have to close the public hearing first, do we, or? It already one? has been. Oh, we did already. Okay, yeah. well, uh, so moved uh, uh, according to the text submitted. Yeah, uh, second. I second. Okay, Karen seconds. And then we'll do a voice vote for all in favor, starting with Bruce. Approved. Um, Karen. Approve. Thank you. Peggy? Approve. Uh, Guida? Approve. And Jim? I approve. And I'm Jennifer and I approve. Okay, thank you. Thanks, so everybody. with that, we'll, uh, the, the hearing portion of the meeting is concluded and then we will move to the public meeting and will um, Amherst Media present? Uh, well, we, there's a number of um, attendees. I'll promote them all to um, the panelists. So there's their engineer, uh, there's the architect, there's Jim, let's go the exec director, and um, sorry, my screen is getting cluttered here. Sorry, and then uh, Ed, um, who's on the board. Oh, Ed who? Ed, Ed Severance, he's on the board. Oh, okay. Yep, and sorry, I was trying to share my screen. Um, maybe stop there. Okay, hi, Bucky. See you. Jennifer, how are you? Good, thank you. Hi. Hi, John Krifka. Right. All right, I can, um, I, oh. I can make, uh, as panelists, John or Bucky, you can take over the screen share if you'd like, or if you want me to do it, um, and you can direct me, it's however you feel comfortable. Well, I've got a number of things on my desktop. I can go to that and open them up, I guess, one at a time and use my cursor to illustrate what I'm talking about. I think the, uh, I don't know if the uh, 
the board got copies of Bucky and my letter that we sent we did. you. Letters we, we did. Sent you. So uh, they both enumerate what we feel are the changes that the planning board saw when it went for site review from the plans that you saw when you did your uh, appropriateness certificate. Um, and in my particular listing, there are 17 items, but I particularly listed uh, six that you might be particularly concerned about. A number of the others have already been shown on the drawing on, on our architectural elevation drawing that Bucky submitted for site plan review. You know, um, it's, a, it's a small scale, but one of the things you, you wanted joints relocated, you wanted louvers relocated, you wanted the ends of certain gables, uh, both ends, the, the uh, sloped end and the other end changed. Um, I've, I've, at the small scale, it shows it on, on Bucky's submittal drawing, which included our architectural drawing. On the large scale, which was a, a drawing we submitted that had particular building sections, we show a couple of the changes now and X'd out what were the old overhangs. So we could take a look at that too. Um, and maybe the first place to start is uh, going down this list and I could open up whichever drawing you want me to, either the one that was presented for the site plan review or the one that was presented earlier for you. Um, I, I, Bucky, I think Bucky's got some, some items as well, some overlap with the architectural items. Um, so. Yeah, I think the, um, just for the commission's background, you know, the, you know, the um, certificate of appropriateness uh, had a few conditions and one was to come back at right. a public meeting to review changes. And so right. Right. now Amherst Media, um, they've gone through site plan review permitting with the planning board and they have more refined drawings, both uh, civil drawings for the, um, the site and then architectural drawings. And so there's been a number of changes and it's the commission's um, role right now to determine if these changes are um, you know, in accordance with the drawings and are de minimis really, so they're minimal, or if some are, you know, say substantial enough that they may need to have a new application to the commission. And so, you know, I think that's uh, what uh, John and Buffy are here to present, just to go over everything. Um, John, just let you know, the mm -hmm. uh, I did email everything to the commission. I mean, there was a lot, but hopefully we can view it today and we could okay. um, go through everything and yeah, uh, feel free to, you can take over the screen share or I could do it too, because we could walk through each one of these um, and you know, make sure the commission can um, understand them all. Well, the one thing I want to make sure is that I have Bucky's, oh, Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry. My daughter is calling from Peru. <laughs> <laughs> <Wow>. Never fails. <laughs> I have to try, I'm going to put it on uh, airplane mode here. I'll talk to her later. Okay, um, let me try and open, uh, Bucky, if I can't do it, um, can you open the drawing that was included in the site plan review of our architecture? I, I think should I be able to, I'll start finding that on my, my world. I think I have it on my desktop here. I know I have the one presented to the Sure, I, can, I have it on, um, oh, where is it actually? This uh, huh. I had it pulled up too. Now I can't. I don't seem to. Is so this it, Bucky? This is it, isn't it? Um, can, that's it. Yeah, those are my plans. Yes. Where would you want to go, John? All well, the way to the end. Let's go down to uh, all the way to the end is my architectural drawing. Okay. Sorry, sorry, everyone, for all the page scrolling. And this is uh. Okay. Let me zoom in a little bit. I can move it, the cursor around if people need any um, direction. But that, uh, this is Bruce, the, the, the letter that John started with, uh, the first item on that was a, uh, was a site uh, related right. thing, uh, stone curbing. And 
oh, maybe we can point it out here. It's on the uh, the west side against the building. So right oh, now there's okay. a dash line that goes down. Yeah. And there had been a sidewalk that went down at one point all the way to the front that's been eliminated. Okay. And what there is is that there's a low planting bed against the side of the building there. And there is a granite uh, edge. Is that what the that yeah. uh, line that that item number one refers to? Yep. Is that that pathway has become a granite uh, edge, right? A, a flower bed edge. And if we look, is it if we look down that? Would it on the elevation? Would we? It's not, it's it's not quite you, visible here, but it's so. I mean, it's quite low. It's it's it's. Up, well, it's sort up, of. I'm moving my cursor, and I. Should, <laughs> yeah. If you go to the north elevation, if you go to the north elevation and move it over to the left of the screen more. Yeah. Oh, you know. Um, sorry, it's, yeah. Down there. Oh, it's going to be probably no higher than a foot, I believe. You know, as a a curb edge. Mm -hmm. And in the, uh, if you raise that up, Nate, a little bit, so we see the west elevation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to fall below it, it. There's a line there. It's going to be fall, fall below, or right up to the edge of the bottom of these uh, divided light windows here, which are in the conference room. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I understand that, and uh, have no problem. Um. Okay. Um, item two, which is probably more significant because when we first presented, there wasn't much discussion, if any at all, about the, the sign. And now in the interim, we had shown just a simple placard that, were on, that was on two posts, you know, three by three or four by four posts. And it was the same dimension. It was three by five, I believe, or four feet by five feet. And actually four by six was what it was. And we've changed it in the interim to, to mimic the Goshen stone wall. That's, um, and this would be, if you go back to our site plan. Okay, here, oh yeah. You're on the right. Um, right, uh, right here. Right there. Oh, oh I see, near the wall, yes. Near the wall. and. The signage is on the south side only. And if you go okay. back to the, up to the sign, Nate. Mm -hmm. Can we see that? Everyone can see that? Uh, yep, I can. Th there mm -hmm. is a, uh, a luminaire that's shielded. That in section, here it is. Right, uh, is this? <laughs> Look at my cursor. Uh, Bucky, put your hand right. Yeah, put the hand right up where the lamp is. It's Nate right. that's driving. It's right. It's right, right here, right? <laughs> right, and yeah. that and that will illuminate the signage. Okay. Um, there's a recess in the in the sign itself. It's recessed, but before, yeah, you know, uh, you, see in, you can see in section here. That's a, yeah. uh, this is the backside facing north. This is a, a crooked version of what should have been a square a section through the sign. Mm -hmm. uh, section yeah, detail, and uh, it, you know, essentially, we want we like this to be a, a light slate here uh, to contrast with the Goshen Stone a little bit, and these would be pin letters that um, you know designate Amherst Media, and then the middle panel is their logo, which is a series of, uh, I guess, sound an indication of a sound. Uh, generation by a electronic device and wait where is this going exactly so if we it was it, there was a monument sign in the original um, plan right. site on the north right here north of the driveway oh so it's going to be north of the driveway okay it, it yeah and the difference is when it came before it was like maybe a wooden post on right um, okay on um i mean a wooden sign on posts and now it's going to be a, a you know a masonry a rock okay. monument sign okay Thank you. I, I don't personally have any problem with that. Yeah. It's hard okay. to say how big it is. I, I, I can't read the um, size. Oh, oh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it says it's six feet wide by, um, five, feet. by five feet. Thank you. And the lettering, how big is The lettering is the scale here. So in reality, um, 
these are probably four inch letters. Uh, this oh, center, okay. pad, you know, and then and then it gets smaller with the street address. Okay. Just to be clear, the letters aren't what six feet by five feet. <laughs> no, no, no. The sign is six feet this way. Yeah, yeah. And five feet high. Okay. Thank you. Can Can I ask a question? I'm, of course, Karen. I'm still not sure where it is. So if you're on the south side, or on the street, Main Street side, is it right in the front? No, can you um, see Can you see the site plan now, Corinne? Yeah. So if here's Main Street right here, yeah. where, where the cursor is, the sign is back up here. Oh, like at okay. the back of, it's at the driveway. At the driveway, okay, okay, great. Nate, can I see if, uh, just for a second to see if I have this on my uh, desktop because it might be easier if I move the curves around. It's oh yeah, sure, yeah, you can share it. Yeah, here. that's fine. I how, think how would I do that? Just if you just, um, click the I think you, I don't know if you can, if you have a, a share somewhere, if you hover your cursor, Ben, do you know where it would be? Um, for, for him, for John. Well, I see there. you are viewing the Nathaniel Malloy's screen. Do I? Uh, yep, yeah, it should be on the bottom. Uh, like oh, okay. bar, bar there's a green arrow. Yeah, where it says share screen, John. You 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 uh, okay. you take over the sharing. Yeah, you can role. take over. I can sit back. Okay. <laughs> have some coffee and a donut. <laughs> okay. Dinner. Cider donut, cider donut season. I, How do I? Uh, I have only till six o'clock. Are we? Have, have no, we should that. conclude by then. Uh, we'll conclude by six. Without, if I click leave, am I going to be totally off the Zoom? Yes. Yeah. I want to get yeah. yeah. So, In the middle of the bottom, a green thing that says share screen. Yeah, I clicked on that. Okay. And uh, what I want to do is get to my desktop. It should, if you, had a, if you had the document already open, it would just, you could share it from there. So John, I'm just going to walk through, so just no, okay. just pegging okay. the time. Okay. So, Why don't you are there it? any more questions on the sign or is everyone okay with the monument uh, sign? I'm okay. I'm the sign. All right, and then, um, so you know the pin letters that are on the sign are probably going to be pretty similar um, um, as what's on the building, right, John? Yeah. Yeah, and so yeah. we had but talked smaller, about smaller, but they'll be smaller. Yeah. yeah, they're really. It's here on the north elevation. This is facing the parking lot where my um, cursor is. It's right over the entry door. And this is something that they we had talked about this uh, as part of the. Uh, original hearing, and then it is again um, right here in the banding on the um, south elevation. So it's a if, if right. You that's what you see from Main Street. Yep, and over the door. Okay. And if you drop down, Nate, uh, that drawing, there's a detail uh, manufacturer's cut, I think, of the of the letters itself. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Up here. Okay. Yeah. And this is yeah. the back view because they have several different methods of attaching these. They could go flush. You could have a furl sort of spacer there for a material that's uneven. And pretty much it's going to be flush if we could do it. Or at most, it will be a quarter of an inch away from the, uh, from the fascia board. And there'll be metal letters. Okay. Perspective. Excuse me? It sounds attractive. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, John. Um, uh, next item, I think. Now, the building eve overhangs um, are increased, and I just, if I could share my drawing, you could see what it's increased to. We could, you know, it's hard to see at this scale. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, think, I think the easiest thing to say is that, you know, the commission recommended a, um, it was like 15 to 18 inch overhang, right, uh, right, John, and, and you've met that. Yeah, we have we have 16 on on uh, one end, on the, not this end. We there's about 12 to 14 inches on this end. I think it shows as 12 inches. It used to be eight. Okay. Yep. And if you go to another elevation, Nate, if you slide the screen over, mm -hmm. on this gable end, it's a a good 16 inches. Okay, and that's the flat part. That's the fascia part. Yeah. I think we can see that you've, uh, that that's been uh, attended to. All right. Okay. And uh, let me see the, 
additional divided light windows. So if we look at the south elevation, and again, this is on my revised big number five drawing, Nate, if I could, I, I don't want to lose the zoom. Um, let me just, let me just try it again. If I open the drawing on your screen and then share, see what happens. I just don't know how to get to my desktop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just, from Berkeley, that's where I put them yeah. because not too long ago, I was able to click on my desktop, you know, and it would go right to the screen sharing. Like, do you have the documents open right now on your? On my desktop? Yeah. Well, they're not open. They're, they're shortcuts. Oh, I think the problem John's having is that he can't see his desktop. He's, uh, he's locked into this Zoom thing. Well, I can't wait a minute. Let me, let me, uh, I'm going to click on one. There we go. You see that or do yeah. I, only I see it. Only you see it. Yeah. Uh, Nate, maybe if you stop your share, it might be easier. For yeah, you. I was just about to do that. Yeah. And I can, um, how do I do that? I can't, yeah. Uh, let me see. I think you've stopped it because I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't need to be looking at me. <laughs> so now, John. Um, I lost that band on top that allowed me to. Okay, now it's on bottom. It says in green, share screen. Under all of our faces. Got a uh, exit minimized. I got building. No, I don't have a. Sh oh, let's see here. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't think I don't know if I have your plan set, John. Could we go back to just what I was showing? I think the commit would that be yeah. helpful or? Yeah, sure. Oh wait a minute. What is this? Who can share? All panelists. So it looks like. Yeah, I'm not sure why. If this is the south elevation, you're talking about the windows? Yeah. There's a plan view, uh, you know, that this plan view that's on, oh, you don't have it. I'm moving my cursor around. Yeah, if we go, if you go to the south elevation, yep. okay. and before, okay. when we appeared before you, I think we only had three divided lights here. And there's some question that you guys had about the symmetry versus the asymmetry. Right. And right. it was kind of undecided, but you accepted what we had shown, which was this, which was the two either side of the door and a third one going to the east. And then there was a solid panel further to the east that went against the projected wing that came out. Right. And what we've done is that we've made it divided lights all the way across. We've, we've taken that part of building clabbered there, the last one furthest east that was against the building and turn that into divided lights, which also goes into their, you know, entry lobby, uh, main functional space, exhibit space, uh, multi-purpose space. And what we've done is we've added a fifth one on this side to kind of give some symmetry around the two columns, rather than stop the columns short with the divided lights. And this actually goes into Jim Wisco's office and he could turn it off, but on our interior, once you're inside, we'd like to return these divided lights 90 degrees. And, and, um, there's some background noise. If I were getting, I just, does somebody, mute. I think, right. need to, does anybody need to mute? Yeah, I think Bruce would. Yeah, so. Yeah. Can you go to the plan, Nate, on the same drawing? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Get it moving. Yeah. Yeah. So right here, I'll zoom yeah. in a little bit. So here are the five now. What used to be three. Here are the five, mm -hmm. and this one, this last one, sits inside the director's office, and we plan to have possibly that return into the lobby area. 
So it kind of reflects these four panels that that are cast into the lobby and also another panel where Jim, the director, can see into the lobby or choose not to. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, we thought that was a, a better solution to the to the front there. You guys might not. You know, we could go back to the what we had shown, but in reality, this seems to be a little more expansive of what the entry should be. So just quickly, let's see, where would those so the south uh, elevation. So here's what was shown previously on the approved. Um, if we can see that on the approved, what was shown earlier. Sorry, I just keep zooming in. Here we are. So it's here. You know, originally it was just the three. And now it's, oh, where am I? Now it's the five right here. I think it's much nicer. I do too. Aesthetically much nicer. Yeah, it's just lighter. You see less of the, the wood, you know, just the solid facade. Right. Also, it doesn't leave that um, west column, the portico west column hanging out there. Right. So, you know, it's got, it's got glass on either side of it, even though right. the portico is projected forward. Right. Right. It's much more graceful. I agree, it is. Can I just ask a question? Did this come about because of the planning board had this suggestion or? No, it came back because we had more time. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, th I agree with. Um, we weren't, we weren't completely satisfied nicer. with yeah, it ourselves. I think, you know, as we go through these, just, you know, think about when we get to the end, you know, will the commit, you know, are these changes in keeping with the, um, the conditions and the certificate? And then, you know, if so, then, you know, th there, there doesn't need to be a new application. So I just want to make sure we're yeah, looking right. at it from that perspective. Yeah. Okay. Continue, I'm sorry. Uh, if you go to the plan, Nate, go yep. back to the plan, the uh, most recent one. Yeah, let me just zoom out a tad. Back where the compressors are in the uh, northwest corner there, there was a picket fence, which is still there, but the picket fence actually continued all the way across to where the break in the wall returns for the rear entrance to the building there. Uh -huh. And that wasn't enough room for the bicycles. It was just, it was just, wasn't working. So if you look at the north elevation, you could see how it reflects in the elevation where the pickets, the pickets are under those two windows and that's where the compressors are. And this is the bicycle rack here. So the bicycles we parked here. Before we had those pickets, continuing in the third bay there. <coughs> and it just made it very awkward to get at the bicycles. Um, and it didn't seem like it was necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, the, the next thing is the lighting. And Bucky, you've included a photometric light plan. And we, we took all the uh, suggestions for making sure there was a fully accommodating north parking lot for uh, travel, but also nothing really glaring and nothing outrageous. Originally, we had some soffit lights under the soffits that were down lights, and they had to become larger than we had thought to illuminate the, the light we needed in the uh, in the parking area. And there was concern about the, the cars that were parked closest to the wall on the north side and those people crossing to getting into the entrance. And now we've got an even distribution. And in doing that, we had to do two things. We had to add two pole lights, one here by the, where the sign is, uh, and, okay, one on the west side oh, sorry, there. One here. I, I, one what, there. What can you see? Can you see here by the monument sign? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yep. And then there's one on the west side. They're 10 feet high. And on this sheet is the type of uh, uh, shielded uh, fixture that sits on top of it. More like a, a lantern, contemporary lantern, more than the old fashioned carriage lanterns. 
And then there's a, a, a bollard. Uh, what there are, there are two parking spaces here. And to get enough light at this part of the site, there's a low three foot bollard here, which in on the left, uh, you can see bollard and it's just kind of an overhanging short um, cap that's uh, not centered, but just overhangs eight or 10 inches of the bollard. And it faces in towards the property. And the one last light we, we needed was on the building here, right at this point, Nate, uh, over to your right there. Yeah, right there. We had to put a, uh, a shielded light that gives us light here throughout. And if you drop down on the sheet. Yeah, hold on. I'm seeing, I'm taking notes too. <laughs> <laughs> right there. You know, I, I think it's about 12 inches by 14 inches. You know, and it's slim line and it directs most of the light down and out, not in anyone's face. Um, it's screened and it was chosen by actually the same vendor that works with you guys and also advised us on the, the pole lights and that one bollard light. So yeah, so there's, yeah, so to summarize, there's, you know, two pole lights, the bollard, and then the exterior. Uh, right. Uh, light. And with the exception, there, there, we eliminated the, the down soffit lights that continued around that soffit overhang of the whole building. And we just have them over the north entry, the south entry, and uh, I believe that's it. Buck, are you there? Yes, Sam. Uh, you know, those are the only two that are different. They'll go in soffits above the entries. Yes, one light over each entry. Okay. And the exit. And do those remain on, like when the um, office is closed? I believe we have stipulated with the planning board that the lights over the doors would be twenty four seven, uh, which so there's always a glow against the building, but it yeah. is really just against the building. That the lights that illuminate the parking lot will shut off at nine thirty p.m. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And Bruce, do you, does this, this is where I defer to Bruce as our resident architect, does this? Um, I, it seems uh, uh, fine. I mean, I can't, re all those little um, uh, tiles that you see across the, uh, the, the parking area there have got um, uh, lumen counts on them. So it tells you the intensity of the lighting and all. Uh, this is way more than we uh, had um so yes that seems fine and but it in, uh, basically i think the 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 issue for us is uh, um and maybe nate i have to ask your guidance here the the, the fixtures uh, appear to me to be fine they look like they're they're thoughtful uh, decent uh, so, uh, uh technically um sophisticated solution uh lighting solution concepts and so forth and um, but they weren't there to begin with um, but I think we knew that there would be something like this that would be necessary because the solving a lighting uh, lighting design solutions cannot happen in schematic design they, they right. really are uh, things that have to be uh, to, to, to you know they're they're, they're advanced uh, right. design decision making so i would like to think that uh, this would be de minimis uh, from the point of view that we knew that something like this would happen even if we didn't knew exactly what it was and where it was going to go um, so i i want to uh, judge this to be not just uh, a, a satisfactory design, but also a de minimis change. Um, am I, are, would we be stretching it uh, from a, I don't know, from a quasi legal point of view if we were to make that uh, finding? No, I think that's the commission's uh, decision. So, Bruce, you already have kind of um, qualified it that, you know, there, I mean, my thought is there was lighting, there were site um, 
um, you know, other structures already on the plan that were, was approved. So, you know, they had the, um, they had soffit lighting, they had a monument sign, they had a fence. So to me, you know, if the commission believes that adding these uh, three other, um, you know, kind of modest uh, posts and a bollard are de minimis, then I think there's enough happening with the project that, that it is. I mean, if, yeah. if for instance, you know, they put in uh, six light posts, you know, the commission might say, okay, that seems like a little much, you know, so I think it's both the quantity and, um, you know, the size and everything. So, you know, I think, you know, if, if the commissioner agrees with Bruce, then it, I think it's fine to say it's the minimus, it's minimal change. You know, that's, that's the, yeah. Okay, well, I say what I say, I think it's a good solution. Okay, thank you. Um, that co covers number eight as well, because uh, we did it as much uh, for the, the parking as well as for the pedestrians. Number nine, uh, we had to take the steps which were turned, which had been rotated originally 90 degrees exiting to the north. And this is just an emergency egress. Um, it won't be an entrance to the building. Uh, because of the two parking spaces that are there, because of the proximity that we needed to get away from the building and not have much left for the stair, the best solution for us was to turn it 90 degrees to have it exit straight out going to the east. The other option was to turning it another 90 degrees and having it exit to the south, but we didn't think, we thought that was more ungainly than, uh, than what yeah. we showed. Here's, here's what was proposed. It turned into the parking space. And here is what is the changes are. Functionally, I think uh, this is better because instead of turning it into one parking space, you are deposited more or less between the two. Um, and I think that from an aesthetic point of view, the, the, this, is, this change all, pretty much all happens below two feet or from two, thereabouts two feet down. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's therefore, I would say, uh, probably inconspicuous or not uh, relatively inconspicuous. And, and depending on what landscaping is done, you wouldn't see it from the street. I mean, the change you wouldn't see from the street. You'll see the entrance or the exit and so forth. So I, I think uh, I understand why you're doing it. Uh, and from my point of view, uh, I think it's a, a functional improvement and a, and a, and a, and a a change which is de minimis because it is it happens so low in the uh, profile of the building. Great, thank you. Good. Uh, number ten is what we've already discussed about the lamp posts uh, and the cut off shielded low bollard light. Uh, number eleven, uh, we've put on the elevations on this particular drawing. We've respaced the decorative vertical joints. We've respaced the uh, the louvers. Uh, we've had because of some interior partitions, it caused us to move some of the windows a little bit left or right. Uh, but the general feeling is the same. I think it gives you what you wanted with the louver spacing before. It might have been a little more random. Um, we've added a decorative. Uh, flat faced pillar to frame those louvers on each side, which we have throughout the rest of the building. And we centered that uh, one light that we needed uh, on the, the yeah, back to the, those pillars. And we've yeah. also located the little vent holes that we needed. So uh, it's more regular than it was. So before, here's, here's what it was before. So that, you know, yeah. similar banding, pilasters, you know, vents and everything. But I mean, I think there was a discussion about having the louvers match the, some of that um, articulation and that's what is happening here. Yeah, that's exactly, I, I remember because I was, uh, I was concerned to change what you showed first time to what you now show. Um, this is exactly what I personally was uh, trying to cause to happen. Good. Um, Item number 12 is the attic storage area plan. On the original presentation, it seemed to fill the whole attic. 
we're limited to a, uh, a travel distance of no more than 75 feet, you know, down to the bottom riser on the ground floor from the farthest point up in the attic. So, Nate, if you could uh, I mean, move yeah, the drawing down, I think there's an attic plan on this drawing. Well, well. hold on. Is this, um, is this even in our bailiwick? Uh, no, it but it was it, a change from what you had seen. It but it's outside. Change. It's inside the building, okay. so it doesn't yeah. it doesn't relate okay. to us. Oh, but John, it doesn't change the roof line or anything. Like no, not at all. Okay, so that's yeah. All right. Uh, Thirteen are the decorative vertical joints at the south elevation upper facing that have been respaded, spaced, uh, similar to what we did at the north. Here. Uh, yeah, there. Uh, 14, we've included a planning plan, which Bucky, do you have that or? I do, would you like me to try and share that? I can uh, share that. Again, is the planting uh, something that that uh, that is in our uh, The only the one is there was a condition that there would be a permanent vegetative screen. So it's essentially like a fence um, um, between, you know, on the uh, parking edge. So, um, I'm lost where I am here. Oh, here we go. The, um, it was, I don't know if this is still the same, oh. Bucky, if this is. Yeah, that's, that's the current, that's the current landscape plan. Yep. Okay. Yeah, typically landscaping is exempt unless, you know, for instance, we've made it, um, the commission has done it in a few instances where, you know, it requires a permanent screen. So if that's still the case, I think that is fine. And I'm not sure if there's anything else that's, um, being used as a screen or anything. It's just regular landscaping, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's true. We do have on the east side, there are two parking lots. And one thing that the, in addition mm -hmm. to the landscaping around the building, uh, they wanted a, a vegetative bed, a, a more diminutive one. Yeah, right there that you're showing, Nate. So we're, that's a, a pollinator planting bed that will help hide those two cars that are also designated as guest parking. Mm -hmm. Okay. And are those um, kind of evergreen? So they'll be... No, actually, they, they're very specifically designed off of UMass's uh, pollinator-friendly planting suggestion that the town has adopted, uh, at least in some cases. So that is, uh, it, it does grow up, and, but during the winter, it is, it is relatively minimal. Okay. There isn't a lot of space there, and evergreens do take up a decent hunk of space. Right. But on the west side, those will be evergreens. Oh yes, those yeah. uh, those are um, they're not boxwoods, but they look a lot like boxwoods. Okay. I, the, I'm not the landscaper, but it's yeah. just on my title block. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. and why, yeah. why are they stopped there? It's sort of not not along the side of the building, also. Is I'm there... sorry. What's the question? Well, I'm curious. I'm curious to know why they're stopped where they're stopped, and on the um, what would that be the um, West side and not yes. so continue those, along the building. The evergreens are strategically placed to obfuscate the parking lot and the cars from anybody on the west side. So if you're up at the Triangle Street intersection, you were looking at this site, you wouldn't see the parking lot because of those uh, evergreens. Okay. They're also elevated higher. This doesn't have the grading plan shown, but there the parking lot is a few feet lower. As you go down along the west side of the building, as John mentioned earlier, there's a, a curb that is going to go along the side of the building and there's a narrow planting strip there that's also going to help provide a little softness to the western facade of the building. Yeah, I mean, the vegetation, the building, so typically vegetation is exempt. I think in this instance it was um, a condition because it's considered a permanent screening, screening for parking. So if, you know, if to me, if later if Amherst Media wants to do more plantings, that's something they do on their own. It's not really something that the commission conditions. Um, right. we make so we had really promised Am um, the women's club also. We were concerned just about the view from Grace, from um, Triangle course, Street, yeah. but also for the, the women's club that when they had events, you wouldn't be looking into the parking lot. Yeah, yeah. you've and got multiple, things, multiple barriers on that. The parking lot is about, uh, five feet lower than the property line. So right there, it's, it's, well, the, it, the cars are not five feet tall. Yeah, maybe, maybe a cargo van would be, but most vehicles are lower than just the grade change right there. 
Yeah. Uh, so the parking lot's already hidden, but adding those evergreens uh, will help on the western side for sure. Yeah. And also, if you remember, we had a number of views, and two of the views were from the Hills House and the Women's Club looking down towards this uh, north west corner of the building. And what we have there is the roof. If you go up to the, uh, if you go back to the north elevation, Bucky. I'm sorry, that's me. I mean, um, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> me. That's all right. All right. Yeah. If you, if you see at the uh, the west end of the building there where the compressors are, there's that roof pitch continues down as a canopy that uh, goes over and shelters those compressors and the bicycles. And I don't know if you remember, but the view that we had looking down from both the women's club and the Hills House with that canopy and with the the grade change and with the boxwoods, you know, you could barely see through to any of the automobiles that are there. And if you could, they're, as Bucky says, they're quite low. Yeah, I think that's good. I mean, uh, the, uh, so we're talking about screening for the parking lot. That's what our previous conversation right. was that's focused on, was, not, yeah. not the building. And if, if we're doing our collectively our job properly, um, uh, we want to be able to see the building because we have we, have, we we want to like what we see, but the parking we agreed would be shaded, and I think having low boxwood like things is work because uh, often if the trees get a little taller, what happens is that the uh, the the vegetation between ground level and two feet or so thins out, and then that would be exactly the wrong place for the vegetation to be screened out in this instance because the uh, the, 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 the real um, hard work of the screening, shall we say, uh, of those boxwoods is really in the, 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 the first two or three feet or two to four feet from the ground level. So we do want uh, vegetation that's, that stays dense uh, all the way to ground level, I would think. And it, it sounds like um, if these are like box uh, bushes, then that would was, be achieved. Uh, yeah, in the planning plan, I think it was, um, it was called out Sorry, I, was I couldn't read it, but uh, Bucky Bay said Bay. it was like box. It's barren wart. Does that sound right, Bucky? It's uh, epidemium. Um, I. It's funny that does not. No, it's planting bed E. Not not that's uh, ID. Oh, so it goes to the right. Didn't... The planting beds on the right side of those. Oh, okay, I was gonna say that didn't make sense to me. Um, where are we? Planting bed. Yikes. Um, oh, <laughs> planting bed E. Yes. Uh, Steve's uh, Japanese holly. Okay, yeah. But they, when you look at them, to my, and I'm not a plant expert, but they really look a lot like boxwoods. They're just a slightly different species. So they will fulfill that uh, uh, functional requirement that I was suggesting was the most important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they yeah. say, it says it on it, um, you know, they have a, they're four to six feet, um, four to six foot spread and four to eight feet tall. So that's, you know, pretty much like a, a square bush. Yeah. Now when you, uh, uh, Bill Gillen was enamored of the planting when you approach the the side rear from the parking lot of Bolt, the inn at Boltwood. Mm. And when you go in that way, when you get out of your car, you're in the parking lot, there is a number of plants uh, against the building, but then there are a number of plants that kind of surround a, a area that they might use, a podium area that m they might use as a presentation area of some sort or a, right. a gathering spot. And those are the plants that, you know, we had hoped to use here. And I don't know the Latin, I assume they are, <laughs> but uh, right. So Peggy you, were asking, handsome. Yeah. Peggy, you were asking a while ago, would they continue the screening down further? Is that what? Yes, I think it, to me, it looks like it would look kind of abruptly cut off. And then you're looking at the side of a building rather than a continuation of whatever lovely trees or bushes have been have been uh, planted, but, uh, so it seems seems to me that it would be it would be more graceful and more in line with the design to have that continue down to the side to the front edge of the building along the whole side of the building. There is infrastructure like buried. I, I will say that mm -hmm. um, the utility site plan on this there 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 are you there are structures there 
So installing shrubbery, woody, woody shrubbery over that is not really going to be possible because it would interfere with the stormwater system, uh, which turns that the western slope and it keeps it a, a nice gentle slope. Uh, but that's only possible by having multiple tanks and pumps buried in that location. Hmm. Also, this is a good illustration of the grade change. Yeah. Um, heading towards the north from that northwest corner again, which is reasonably steep compared to further down going to the south, which, you know, expansively opens up the lawn area, which the neighbors wanted to keep, you know, they wanted to see that lawn as much as they could, uh, looking down from Hill's house and from the uh, women's club. Yeah, I'm also afraid that I mean, we can't impose a new condition now. Right. Right. So it's, uh, it's approaching six. I know we're going to lose people, so we should uh, see if we can wrap this up. Well, the last thing is uh, we've, you're not concerned with the interior rooms, but we did show now a curved sidewalk in lieu of the perpendicular sidewalk that came directly mm -hmm. out. And we also indicated gutters and downspouts on the elevator. <laughs> Yeah, both of those, I think, John, were requests of ours, and I think you've yep. done what we asked for. Yep. Okay. So if, if you know that that covers it, you know, I, um, you know, the wall in the back, just um, just so everyone's aware, you know, at one point the retaining wall along the north was um, maybe ha was going to have a concrete, um, you know, um, structure, and then have whether it be a face of dry laid, but now it's going to be uh, you know an all dry laid stone wall. You know the visual appearance hasn't changed necessarily, but the construction of it has. I just you know for the commission's benefit. Right. So it will be because I would think stone is preferable to cement. Right. Yes, right. I think this is a better scheme uh, all around. So I just wanted to ask. So in terms of like this, the stone wall and those additional windows on the front, that is the way it's going to be. This is. This is yes. Right. That won't yes, change. Yes. No, it won't. Okay. I mean, we're just looking for your blessing right now. And right. these are the major changes we want to run past you. Yeah, I mean, I would, if the commission, if the commission feels they're de minimis, we could have a motion and a vote. And then, you know, and then they the Amherst Media can proceed. So there's no, you know, and if, if we think there is something that, you know, you have questions about, we could ask it. Um, okay. Um, um, are, are there any questions? I have yeah. none that I haven't already I asked. Yeah. I've, yes. also, I've also looked at the drawings uh, um, and, and, and beyond what uh, John has uh, uh, advised in his letter, uh, I don't see anything that, uh, that wasn't in the letter that should have been or could have been. Uh, it, it, uh, the, the, the document seems to uh, from the elevation standpoint, particularly, uh, complied with everything with, that we had asked. Yeah, and I agree with Greta and Karen. I actually think adding those windows just lightens up the facade. I think that's a big improvement. Yeah. So I, I'm prepared yeah. to move uh, that uh, the commission, uh, having viewed the uh, the uh, um, the current what are they design development plans. Well, this, yeah, I mean, we could say that. We haven't started construction documents yet. Yeah. And well, the owner wants a lot of interior particulars, which don't go well, to your bailiwick. Let's, so we'll no, let's, let's, uh, let's phrase it differently. Uh, having, the commission having viewed the, com the, the design drawings for, uh, for a completed uh, product, um, uh, do I go with the specifically for the exterior uh, finds the uh, the drawings Don't consistent stay. with our earlier with our earlier deliberations and any and the noted changes to be uh, de minimis a second um, can I ask then uh, now that we have a Person, so, Nate, is that uh, phrasing? Uh, does does that cover the technical requirements? Uh, 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 does does that cover our obligations in this matter? Yeah, I mean, is, it I, pro is it being properly expressed from that standpoint? 
Yeah, there was a little static when you're reading. I have it, you know, with a view the Why current plan, view the current back. plans, and it's consistent with the certificate and delay deliberations. Um, so the changes are de minimis. I think that was fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is there a second to the motion? I thought you, Jennifer, seconded it. No, I, I don't think I'm allowed to. Okay, for some reason I thought, oh, you asked if there was a second. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, I thought we had a second. Oh, no. Uh, Seconded. Okay, Karen. Okay, so we'll do the voice vote again for all in favor, Bruce. Oh, no, Peggy's at the top of my screen. Oh, boy. Peggy? Yep. Okay, Bruce. okay, Bruce? I approve. Um, moving down, Karen? I approve. Rita? I approve. Good. Jim? I approve. Yeah, I'm Jennifer and I approve. And for Amherst Media, since we're zooming in, we have to do a voice vote. So. Yes. Can I say, Jennifer, um, uh, to, uh, to John and to Bucky, and, and I think uh, in the background there is Jim and, uh, and, uh, and others, that I think you've uh, done very well. And uh, I think this is uh, a, a very, very satisfactory uh, result from my point of view. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, John. Thanks, Bucky. Thank you. Jim and Ed. Thank you, guys. Happy to help. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Good. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Guys, I think the, um, I was just going to, I think that's everything. Um, it is. It's everything that was on the agenda. Yep. Well, well that's good because it's four minutes past somebody's uh, pumpkin time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Do we need to set a new date, next date, or do we have one? I think, um, do we have one? Um, I think we, we have one. Yeah, we have the next meeting. Is that the 28th? Uh, of October? We, I, I think we accept we the a, next meeting. We have a few, um, we do have a few applications that are coming in. Um, let me see the 28th. Yeah. Uh, 28th is a Wednesday. Do you mean that? Um, yeah, I don't have another meeting. What do, what do yeah, I guess 20? maybe we didn't. I, we, I maybe we two weeks ago we said two. Will we do the 20, uh, 26th of October? That's Monday. Okay. Oh my God, that's a week before election day. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that fine with everyone? We'll say the 26th? Yeah, at four o'clock again. Mm -hmm. In the document, it said three o'clock that we were meeting. It's true, it did say three o'clock. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I must have uh, keyed it wrong. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, I checked to forward. see if today's meeting was at four. I did too, Jennifer. I did too. <laughs> but we will meet at four on the 26th. Yeah, and we'll probably just let you know 19 mm -hmm. McClellan, 19 McClellan um, is going to resubmit if they haven't the port one. And there's a number of applications being discussed in terms of projects, you know, in, in both districts. So there could be, you know, anywhere from like one to four projects on the 26th. It all depends uh -huh. on what actually comes through. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. This was a long meeting, so. Yeah. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay, yeah, no, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. So we can-